Hey, welcome back. We're wrapping up section one of chapter seven of the practice of statistics. Um, the first part, which is linked down below, um, is kind of the experience. So you can kind of get a feel for what we're doing. And now we're going to formalize it and go through an example or two. As always, links um, to the notes and stuff are down below. Subscribe, like, comment, and let me get going. Just be thankful I don't have sponsors for this, right? Um, evaluating a claim. There are three steps to evaluating a claim. First of all, you have to assume that the claim is true. You can't prove that anything's true. You can just prove things don't work. All right. That's kind of the whole basis of statistics. You're just going to say, well, we just don't have evidence to say that's not true. So we're going to assume that the claim is true. You are going to create a simple simulated sampling distribution. So you're going to go through and you're going to say, all right, so if we did this, this is what it would look like. So in our case before, we were taking those groups of, we we're taking five tests out of the pool, taking the average of them. And then after that, we're going to find a percentage chance of getting what we had observed. So that was what we did in the last step. So you're going to say, all right, we're going to assume that everything is okay. This is what we're seeing. We'll do a sampling distribution, and we're going to look for that sample. Actually, I think I have it right over here. My apologies. Oops. Yeah. So what you're going to go through and do is that you're going to go through and you're going to say, all right, here's... We're going to assume that the claim is true. Here's our sampling distribution. Here's the observed results. So we're going to say, all right, what is the chances of that happening going over there? All right. If that number is 5% or less, that, or, or to me, is less than 5%, then that's going to be convincing evidence. And again, remember here, you're going to look for percentage of dots. So if that number is less than 5%, we're going to say it's convincing evidence against the key claim notice here too so we're going to say nope can't happen so something's goofing up, goofing around or if it's bigger than or equal to five percent then we're going to say well we don't have any convincing evidence that it's not true so yeah keep going with it so check your understanding we're going to walk through this the thing about the nice thing about this check your understanding is it actually setting up some of the parameters that you're going to be doing or needing to do on the college board exam. So hopefully, so pay attention to what you're supposed to do. Okay, see you in a minute. All right, so pennies made before 1982 were 95% copper. Now the interesting thing here, because of the price of copper, each penny from before 1982, because of the copper content, is actually worth 2.3 cents. Um, pennies made after 1982, because they changed it, so there's not so much copper, it's only on the outside. There's 2.5% copper there and so jenna a friend of yours i'm assuming reads that 13.2 percent of all pennies in circulation are from before 1982 so they're copper pennies jenna has a large container of pennies at home she selects a random sample of 50 pennies from there and finds that 11 of them happen to be 19, or before 1982 so they're the copper pennies. So does this provide convincing evidence that the proportion of her pennies in her container are greater than 13.2%? Because if so, let's sell them for copper. I don't know if you can do that, actually. Somebody figure that out. So these are going to be the four things that you're going to have to go through and do. And this is setting up, again, in the college board exam. Um, you're going to need to be very specific with how things are laid out. Okay, and this is going to be an example of one of the things we're going to do. So the population is all the pennies in the container. The samples is the 50 pennies that Jenna pulled in this case. The parameter, we are assuming nothing has changed. So we're going to assume that her container is much like what we're seeing out in, out in the real world. That's why I underline this. It's going to be 13.2%. And the statistic then from what she has is 11 divided by 50, and she got 22%. Now notice here, this is your proportion. Why? Because we're talking about percentages of the population. So this is my population. P hat, which is my sample, is 0.22. Okay. So this setup right here is going to be similar to things that we're going to be asking you to do over the next three chapters. And, the lay, and before you ask, is it important? It's terribly important. It's, it's showing the readers that you know what you're talking about. So. Does Jenna have some evidence that more than 13.2% of her pennies are pre-1982 copper pennies? Well, yeah, she got 22%. That's some evidence. Now it says some evidence. Is it enough to say that she something didn't happen? Yeah, really. One sample is not always good enough. Because what are the two things that could have happened? 
the percentage of pennies in her container is actually 13.2, and she just got lucky. Maybe somebody counted them all and just put on the top. That's, that's where she grabbed from. You know, those were where the pre-1982 pennies were. I don't know. It could also be that her container actually does have a higher percentage than 13.2%. So how do we know? Well, what we do is we're going to say we're going to assume that is 13.2%. And we're going to go through and we're going to, there's a simulation here of, all right, if it's actually 13.2%, we went through and there is we did 100 simple random samples of size 50 out of something like that, out of the big container. And this is what we saw in terms of percentages. So notice we're a little bit here below 5%, all the way up to over 30%. A lot of them are kind of here in the middle, in that 10 to 15%. Who would have thought? If the population means 13.2%, the you know the sample means should be kind of somewhere around there too, right? So there is one dot at 22%. Explain what this dot represents. So right here at 22%, that dot is a simple random sample of 50 pennies, which had 22% copper pennies in the sample. That's all it means. Nothing important, nothing super crazy. That's just what that means. So assuming that 13.2% of the pennies in circulation are pre-1982 copper pennies, is it surprising that randomly selecting 50 pennies for which the proportion is 20% or greater is greater and justify your answer? So this is what we're looking for here. Okay. And so we ended up getting, there's four of them there, one, two, three, four. So that's four out of 100. So 4% of what we saw was 22% or higher. So we'd say, yeah, only 4% of the samples at 22% or greater. So yeah, that's definitely, you know, one of those things where it's like, yeah, all right, here we go. It's surprising. We wouldn't expect to see that because 4% is less than 5%. And again, we'll get more formal as we go, but just giving you a setup here. So based on your previous answer, is there convincing evidence that more than 13.2% of the pennies in Jenna's container are pre-1982 copper pennies? Yes, assuming that Jenner's container contained 13.2% copper pennies, it is unlikely at a 4% level to get a sample with 22% or greater. So we're saying that what we're seeing, if what if a container held true and matched what the population has, what we're seeing is unlikely. So it is surprising, and we would say, yeah, there's evidence there saying that she probably has more than that 13.2% copper pennies in that container. So again, as we go, we're going to get a little bit more specific with the setup up here, but you can already kind of start to see where we're going in terms of, well, this is what we're seeing. It's really unlikely. So we're going to go ahead and say, yeah, that can't happen. Okay. And that's a lot of what happens with like polling and data and things like that. But we'll get, we've got plenty of time to talk about that. All right. If you have any questions, throw them down below. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.